Alrighty, y'all. Hello, and welcome to another video that's going to make us all hungry, I think. We're looking at behind the scenes at a bakery in France. Sounds delightful already. Suggested on Discord by Renard, so I appreciate it. Always good stuff from you. And this comes to us from a channel called We in France. So uh, let's take a look at this and get straight to it. So be linked in the description. Make sure to check them out as uh, we'll only see part of this video and make sure to check out the channel. Oh, man. Oh, man, this looks cool. Okay, everyone <laughs> knows that bread is a huge part of French culture. Something that rings true about French people is they love their bread. You'll see people with a baguette under their arm in the morning, in the afternoon. That's a real stereotype. Nice. But do you know how much work actually goes into making that beautiful bread and those I can't beautiful imagine. pastries you see every day? Not sure if you do, and I don't know either. So let's go inside and get a behind the scenes look. I'm going to guess a lot of craftsmanship. I'm going to guess it's delicate work, right? Uh, I've heard nothing but amazing things about bread really throughout a lot of European countries. But of course, France. Come on now, right? It's got to be one of the meccas for an amazing bread culture, amazing food in general. And uh, I can only imagine how tasty and delightful this stuff is. And I can't wait to get a look at this because this kind of bakery is just so rare so first, in the a U.S. Background. It's not, not this common. This is Mr. Travers. He's the owner of Travers Bakery, what you're looking at right here, oh my in goodness. Cholet, France. It's in the Pays de la Loire oh. region. Oh. Look at all this golden goodness. Damn. Bread in France is big business, and even on a slow day, this bakery still makes over 1,000 baguettes. They have a team of 25 what? employees that make... That bakery? I mean, it didn't look terribly huge. 1,000 baguettes and a even day? Even on a slow day, Minimum? this bakery still makes over 1,000 baguettes. They have a team of 25 employees that make oh, bread, gosh. pastries, and more. And everything is done right here from scratch. They Damn, look at that flan. What on earth? This stuff looks hella good. <laughs> Dude. And everything is I should not be watching this. I'm going to get starving right and I can't I can't go out and find this stuff near me. At least not like this. Like, oh my god, man. Scratch daily. Impressive, isn't it? Wow. Look at those macarons. Okay, it's just after 4 a.m. and I'm here at the bakery. Early at the start. Back door behind me. I'm gonna get started with the early morning team. See what they're up to. And just a quick note: this is a big bakery. They make all kinds of things, so of course they have a big team. Uh, starting. I'm sorry. It probably is a bigger size, but I, I was still shocked at that number. That so maybe it's not a small bakery, but I guess to try and express what I'm saying, I did not know that they were making that kind of amount of bread daily. That's a lot. Starting early is the norm, but, but having yeah, such a big team not uh, big. is not typical in France. It exists, of course, but a lot of bakeries are much smaller, and maybe they just have a baker mm. and uh, you know a cashier, another employee. Uh, right. So I just wanted to point that out, that not all bakeries are like this, but let's head in. Getting inside, I met the two bakers already hard at work, Quentin already and Sylvain. Already at 4 a.m. You'll meet them in a second. I saw all kinds oh, of bread and pastries goodness. in various stages of completion and gained an appreciation right away for the organization and precision that goes into getting the bakery ready for the morning customers. Oh, dude, this is like... These videos are like the funnest to watch. Videos about amazing food, especially food that I'm not used to having every day in the U.S., um, but they're also the worst to watch because I'm just sitting here mouthwatering hungry, man. And some of this stuff is hard to replicate here. Et puis après, il y a d'autres fours qui vont s'enchaîner avec euh, d'autres différents pains, euh, des pains spéciaux. Euh. Donc voilà. Oui, boulanger, okay. ça fait 10 ans. 10 ans 10 ans, oui. Mais vous êtes jeune 10 ans déjà. Je fais jeune, oui, non, j'ai 26. 26. Bon, quand même oui. je... Started baking on an amazing pro level like this. Since he was 16. Donc Damn. en France, vous commencez à 16 ans on commence à 16 ans, mais en apprentissage, donc on va à l'école en même temps. Okay. That's awesome. Mais euh, 10 ans, après, ça fait 5 ans que je suis euh, ouvrier, enfin à temps plein. 
Donc euh, moi c'est Sylvain, donc euh, ici bah, je suis boulanger. Oh, look at this stuff, man. You know, it's funny because some viewers watching this, you might be watching this from France, you might be watching this from various parts of the world that has, you know, uh, daily access to maybe a bakery like this with all this different variety and, and this fresh homemade goodness, right? So you might be thinking like, man, what's this guy drooling over, you know? But come on now, like if you don't have access to this, everything here is, you know, mostly corporatized, right? If you live in any sort of big city, it's either going to be mostly corporatized, prepackaged stuff, not fresh like this, or you really got to know what to look for and search for good local bakeries and stuff here. It's just not like the same kind of culture here in the U.S. There might be some really good ones here. I'm not really sure, but that's just the point. I don't know any off the top of my head near me where it's going to be like this, right? This is a bakery in France. This is next level homemade uh, tradition, right? Like this is good stuff. Uh, Tourier aussi, donc uh, ce qui est uh, faire les croissants, uh, toutes les viennoiseries. Et là, je suis en train de dorer la brioche qui va aller ensuite au four Damn. avec de la dorure pour que ça, ça lui donne un aspect brillant et tout. I have to admit, they, all this is part of the process, right? It's almost like kind of food artistry, right? It's like they're creating art that uh, everyone wins. It's art that you saw when we initially walked in those scenes. It looked amazing, that golden goodness right looking through the glass you could see all the different uh selection and they all looked very well presented right and uh it just happens to be art that looks good and you get to eat it <laughs> and it tastes good i'm sure well uh, after the college i did a bep boulanger and then i did a uh, bac pro also in boulangerie pâtisserie and then for after for being formed i did a year in pâtisserie okay like that uh, si, uh, that's cool these guys are young kind of young guns right and they have been uh in this for some years in you know did it alongside a school and whatever other training and uh this is a real deal right i mean of course it is this is beautiful food right and if we know anything uh especially my wife and i you know, baking and uh, various pastries and things can be really difficult to make. They can be hard to get right, and they can be easy to get wrong, if that makes sense. So I have no doubt that this is a uh, basically like a trade. Like there, You have to be trained for this and have passion for it uh, to equal a good product, right? Genre Especially day in and day out. Ça peut pas nuire dans, dans nos métiers de, de savoir un peu tout faire et tout. Ça, ça peut être qu'un plus. Oui, bah ça on fait tous les matins. Ça c'est tous les matins, on fait en, en fonction des quantités. Ça change, ça change tous les jours en fonction des right. commandes. That's what I'm wondering now. When they said, you know, over a thousand baguettes alone, and you saw all the different uh, decadent pastries and macarons and brioche dish, croissant that, like all these different things, right? Uh, that is a tall order, man. That is a lot to be made day in and day out. No wonder they have to start at 4 a.m. That's pastries, quiche, mini pizzas, and all kinds of things in and out of the oven like a perfectly timed dance. Wow. Everything you see is made 100% from scratch right here on the bakery's premises. See, that's what I like. That's what I like. Of course, who doesn't love local homemade pastries and bread? and sweets and and just decadent food that you can enjoy and tear into and it's fresh and hot and it was made that day uh just a couple hours prior maybe right whereas something with a barcode that was made uh a couple months ago and packaged with preservatives and yada yada it's just uh it wears you out after a while man people get sick of that i think that i think with internet culture and stuff I think that, I mean, I'm sure it exists in other countries as well, but I think the U.S., like I've always said in my videos, it, it, it's become so corporate where, you know, everything's about pumping out product. And it, of course, this happens in food as well. So it's like corporate, corporate, pump out product, you know, get as much out there as you can. And it's all package this and package that. And I think people are actually opening their eyes and thinking, you know what? I'm sick of this. I want real food. I need healthy food. I want food that I know what it's made out of and how it's made and and i want it to be as real as possible because 
doesn't that make sense to eat real food? <laughs> right? So I don't know. I hope, you know, this kind of trend uh, will, you know, continue and uh, catch on in the U.S. somehow. Because that would be great to be eaten like this all the no time. No preservatives or additives <laughs> are used. And uh, we'll see. let me show you some of the magic I was treated to this morning. And yes, Beautiful. everything smelled just as good as it looks. Oh, if I could have smell vision Look at how it looks. Phenomenal. And if I could smell, oh, this must be delightful. This, I'm assuming this is the type of place you walk by outside and you can just smell this like down the block. You know what I'm saying? This got to be just magnificent. <laughs> I mean, come on, right? On va avoir un type de lamage différent et c'est ce qui va permettre en fait aux ah. en fait, euh, de euh, justement laisser la vapeur d'eau s'échapper en fait et de soulever et de, en fait, de développer en fait euh, le pain en fait. C'est ce qui va lui donner son, son aspect. En fait. See, telling you bacon is like a science, right? There is a science to this, of course. Not to mention it looks cool too, right? The way they score it after it's all said and done. Get that pattern in there. Man, that music is killing me. The clip is being played back in real time. He is just that fast. Yeah, that's what I admire too is that it's good. They, these guys are pumping out good quality homemade local bakery goodies. And the fact that on scale, you know, they have to do quite a bit of these per day. And they're doing these day in and day out. Of course, they're going to become pros at this. Right? Look at that. I love watching them do that with the big, I don't know what you even call that thing, that big bread shovel <laughs> big tray a baguette is not just a baguette here's quentin explaining the different types let's hear it just a quick note about the following clip sometimes bakeries have special names for the tradition baguettes that are unique to that particular bakery you'll hear quentin talk about baguettes called saint pierre and moge they're specific to this bakery to travers so don't go to paris and ask for a saint pierre okay Gotcha. Okay, and we're skipping ahead again. As always, uh, rem reminder, this is linked in the description so you can watch this whole thing and, of course, uninterrupted and browse our stuff uh, as we are skipping around quite a bit of this. Um, this is forward to a specialty bread, uh, curcuma and nut baguette. Elle est vraiment beaucoup plus jaune, en fait. Là, ça se voit un peu moins. Enfin, on le voit un peu sur les côtés qu'elle est... Qu est quand même assez jolie. Oh, est quoi, ça donc, euh, baguette curcuma. Donc, euh, c'est de la okay. paille fine de tradition. Donc, avec euh, du curcuma. Et c'est un mélange de noisettes et de noix en fait qu'on a... oh. qu incorpore en fait en fin de pétrissage pour donner euh, un petit goût et puis euh, des aromates. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good to me. So did all. While Quentin was tending to his bread, Sylvain was hard at work mm. making his viennoiserie. Brioche and more. Donc c'est le même sirop, euh, du beurre, du sucre. Euh, non là c'est euh, des œufs battus. Oh. Il a doré. Oh it's egg wash. It gives the golden color. Là, okay. C'est de la brioche. Euh, Makes vendée. sense. D'accord. Et quelle est la différence entre la brioche vendéenne et la brioche euh, française normale? La gâche. La gâche, c'est quoi la gâche La gâche, il y a beaucoup plus de crème, de crème fraîche à l'intérieur. D'accord. Oh, ok. Look at that. C'est de la pâte feuilletée. I'm getting way too hungry watching this. This is not good. Avec du sucre. On a fait le dernier tour dans le sucre. Et après, on l'a découpé en toutes petites bandes. Pour, et après, en cuisson, ça s'étale. Avec le feuilletage, ça gonfle. Et... Certain things can be made in advance, or at least partially, to help streamline the morning process. Doughs need to be made the night before so they have time to rise. 
Pastry dough is also made in advance, so it has time to chill in the refrigerator. Mm. Lots of prep work is done several hours before or even the night before, so the morning routine runs smoothly. So in other words, running a bakery like this anywhere, but especially like this, like this French bakery we're looking at, this is like, I feel like this is really hard work. Like this is tough. It, it's You got to have your schedule down. You got to have the science down with this, right? Certain things you need to get up early. You need to be there early and get this stuff rolling before the shop opens, right? But of course, some of it involves overnight. You need to the night before prep for the day after, right? I mean, wow, there's just a lot to it. I feel like it's very difficult. But at the same time, of course, it would be very fun, of course, if this is your passion. And uh, regardless, it's very fulfilling, I'm sure. It's just cool looking into uh, a deep dive into a little bit of behind the scenes of what it's like running a French bakery. It's... um. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild. Under the Look at that. That that might oh, How can you go wrong with this? Look, these are good even in the US, all right? I I can't imagine how good these are, right? You got a, a chocolate croissant, right? But yeah, th this has got to be good. <laughs> yeah, look at that technique. Donc les couches beurre pâte ont été faites comme il faut. Et so là, elegant and precise. Man, I wish I wish I could grab that right out of the screen. Just take take a sniff, take a bite. Come on. When are we inventing that, huh? <laughs> Here's a side of the bakery I've never seen before. All the cases are empty. Oh, but as yeah. as different things become ready in the morning, they're moved little by little. I didn't even think of that. Look at how much work it is displaying these things. Wow. Oh, my God. Uh, you got to throw it in the comments. If you work in a bakery or if you've ever worked in a bakery, any uh, stories or, uh, you know, an anecdotes you want to throw in there for us, I would appreciate it. I mean, this is spectacular, man. Little into the main this is cool. store, getting ready for the morning customers. You know what? Everything looked like it was reasonably priced as well. Because if there are fancy bakeries you find in the U.S., which you do find some, I feel like they're kind of pricey. I feel like they're kind of pricey. Uh, I'm I'm seeing things for like a euro or like under under one euro even. Like everything seemed really kind of cheap. It's a win-win, right? You'll notice that the design of this bakery is pretty cool. Look, you can see the bakers and the pastry chefs yeah. working in the back from the main... I always like that. I do like restaurants. Uh, I've been in some like that, where you can see behind and, and see the process kind of from the floor. I appreciate that. I think it's kind of cool. In store. See them through the glass? Yeah, I always, I always like that for sure. I also spent some time watching the pastry chefs work in another part of the kitchen. Oh my God. Everything they're making looks great, doesn't it? But yeah. it's too much to get into in this video, so I'm just giving you a taste of what they were up to. Let me know if you'd like to see more in an upcoming video, and maybe I'll just make it for you. All right, well, good news. This is linked down there, and it looks like she made a part two and maybe a part three uh, having to do with this behind the scenes at, I believe, this French bakery. So. I'll be checking that out in my off time for sure. Uh, this part one, you know, we saw only part of. So uh, make sure to check out that link down there. Check her out and uh, you can catch up on those as well. This was a great suggestion. I do appreciate it. Um, I learned a little bit. Although I don't think I'll be a pro at making uh, French baguettes anytime soon. Right. I think there is definitely an art form to that and some passion and technique involved that uh, isn't learned overnight. This was very cool. And now I'm very hungry. I don't know. I guess I'll just have to wrap it up and figure out what I'm going to eat because it's not going to be as fun as this. I can guarantee it. <laughs> Draw a like on there. If you enjoyed this one, subscribe to be part of this amazing community we do have here and click that join button if you want to become a member for really cheap. I do appreciate that as well. Thank you guys for being here and watching. I hope your holidays have been great and the end of the year is upon us. I hope it was an excellent year for you as well. And here's to next year. My name is Ian. You're watching IW Rocker. And until next time, y'all.
Stay safe out there. I'll catch you later.